Hi, this is KSP with a tape, and today you join me on the launch pad with the Soyuz rocket and Soyuz capsule. Um, today I'm staging a race between uh, the Soyuz rocket and Falcon 9. Uh, if you haven't, um, well, the Soyuz rocket is a Russian craft which now takes people to the International Space Station as a replacement to the shuttle, and Falcon 9 is um, pretty well summarized in my Falcon 9 video, so either go watch that, but basically it's made by a private company called SpaceX who want to make humanity interplanetary. Anyway, I decided to see which one was faster, um, to get into a 90,000 kilometer, a 90 kilometer orbit. Um, so, the Soyuz is up, well, I'll just throttle up and I'll put SAS on, and I'll, um, get ready to go, uh, now, yeah. Um, so that's, uh, launching. And it's launching pretty fast, not as fast as Falcon 9, but this has more fuel, and Falcon 9 needs to, with Dragon on the top, the capsule, um, needs to limit its speed to conserve fuel. So it'll be a pretty close race, because this hardly has to use the second stage, whereas, um, the, uh, whereas Falcon 9 has to use quite a lot of the second stage, so that takes longer, but this is generally slower, and this is a three-stage rocket. But anyway, I've got this throttled up, and I'm absolutely gunning it, so, um, so this should uh, try and go as fast as possible to have any chance of beating Falcon 9. Right, so we're at like 3,200 feet and we've got the big three in the cockpit. Um, right, I'll begin my gravity turn relatively, yeah, there you go. This isn't live commentary, it should have been live commentary, um, but my, as I've said in previous videos, my screen recorder is a, has a nasty habit of recording at a random rate. Not, not like, it doesn't, it records way faster than it should, and it doesn't, like, stay at a constant speed. It kind of decides a random one, and I think this bit might be a bit slow. Well, I'm sorry for that, but I'm using Ubuntu, and I have limited software, and most of it's terrible. Um, but anyway, as you can see from looking at the guys, um, there's two guys behind Jeb, uh, because Jeb's the commander in this, and the two guys are behind, um, uh, the flight assistants. Anyway, now I'm doing the gravity turn at about 11,000, trying to get my altitude up more than usual, because usually I launch into a lower orbit, unless I'm launching, well, other stuff. And there we go, ditch those stages, I really love how those go off, those um, side mounted, and that's kind of revolutionary for rocket design, because it was one of the first to build outwards rather than upwards, which brought forward a great new... Um, a whole bunch of great new possibilities for rocket design. I mean, Falcon Heavy uses, as if you've seen my video or know anything about Falcon Heavy, you know it uses um, a main stage with two exact same main stages on the outside, which cross feed into the middle to make it more fuel efficient and have a bigger lifting power. Now, these outer boosters on this don't actually cross feed, but they just have less fuel, so they break off first. And this is a really good design. I mean, I love the Soyuz capsule and the Soyuz rocket. And currently, I think the most efficient and safest way of putting people in space. Hopefully, uh, Dragon and Falcon 9 will take over that. I, I am a massive fan of SpaceX. But I didn't let that impede this um, this contest. I am absolutely gunning it with this. And, yeah, and it's going pretty well. I mean, we're getting our apple ups up. That's, yeah, higher. Not quite as hard as I'd like, but... um pretty good, and you can see there's already a ship orbiting, that is part of my, this is my Area 51 save, or my test save, so that's a secret project. What it actually is, is, um, it's actually an one of my entire moon launch things, and then we're out of the atmosphere, that I plan to attach some boosters on, and land on EVE for my populating the solar system pro, uh, series, because I need to get people off EVE if I'm going to put a base there. Anyway, that's 90,000, seriously, it'll be awesome, but anyway, that's 90,000. Um, so I'm just going to wait to get pretty much out of the atmosphere and burn off the last bit of this main stage because I'm pretty sure that'll make it faster, but, you know, it probably would have been better in hindsight to ditch that and have a lighter rocket, but, uh, it'll be fine. But, oh no, but I burn early, so it doesn't make a difference except pushing out my, uh, apogee. And you can see Jebediah is perfectly happy or screaming. He looks happy. It looks fine. And it has a it has an all right interior and various windows. And something I just found out from watching Harv's live stream is that if you click on windows and cockpits, it zooms in on them. Who knew? I mean, it was a mind explosion because on one of his live streams he had 
He had the devs. Yeah, he had some devs on it. I mean, they raised over 10 grand. That's pretty good. I mean, if you didn't see his live streams, his, he was doing some uh, huge live streams in which he drove to the North Pole to raise money for charity water. Raised 10,000 pounds. Pretty good. 10,000 dollars, even. It's pretty good. Anyway, back to the challenge. I'm just getting slightly closer to Apogee so I can burn off this main tank. And there you go. I'm just watering out there. Um, I was thinking I might turn this kind of thing into a series where I race maybe shuttles and Falcon Heavy and other iconic ships that people make mods of. And then maybe maybe I should race Mech Jab with something. That'd be pretty fun. See see who does it faster, me or Mech Jab. I mean, who does it better would be Mech Jab, but, uh, but I'd have a fight in the speed race. Anyway, um, I was ditching that stage and ditching all those fairings, crazy amount, smashing up my ship because they're ditched weirdly. I have no idea what that's about. And there goes the escape tower. Because you get an escape tower to rip them free if there's a problem, um, which the shuttle didn't have because it was side mounted, which was stupid. The shuttle wasn't great. Um, but anyway, I ditched that now because I no longer need it. And some, but some people argue that it, if there was a problem with a rocket, it'd probably kill them before the escape tower did anything. But it's nice to have. Anyway, getting near perigee, apogee, um, wondering whether I should burn from way back and have it really inefficient and horrible, or burn from there and have to wait a little longer to burn. But I decided to warp up there because it would be ridiculous to burn from way back. Might not even get it up to nine thousand. No, it has to be at nine kilometers. Uh, nine, it has to be at least over 90 kilometers to get a parity of 90 kilometers, so you do have to burn a bit. And there you go, it's uh, going on another four engine stack. Uh, the clusters each have, each engine cluster, it has five clusters that start, each have four engines, and then it breaks down to the one cluster and then this cluster. And then above this is um, another small engine for getting to a space station for instance the International Space Station, or the Mir Space Station, which was a Russian station that they deorbited before the International Space Station. Anyway, there goes my perigee. That's up to 70, 80... That's 88, and that's what, 532? Or 533? Let's call it 532. Give it the benefit of that. We are here, so our a little higher apple apps, but it's more about speed than efficient uh, than goodness. Anyway, let's let's take a look at the rest of this whilst we have some time. Stitch those fairings. A lot of fairings, I do like that, and that's the main thing gone. You can see there's a little drive section on the back, which I just fire up. Yeah, you get a little glimpse of it. Yeah, so that would push it to stations. Uh, yeah, like I was saying, the Mir station uh, was a Russian thing before we had the International Space Station, and uh, we ended up deorbiting it. Anyway, back on the launch for the Falcon 9. It looks elegant there. It's got Dragon on top without its fairings, because they don't usually launch Dragon with fairings. Don't know why, but I've seen quite a lot of Falcon 9 launches, because I'm a massive fangirl of, uh... Ah, fanboy! <laughs> yeah, no, I'm a massive fan of Kerbal, uh, SpaceX. Anyway, so, um... So I'm just throttling up. This has a 9-engine cluster, but just one. So I'm then I throttle back a bit because, well, it's super fast and I've got to save fuel. And it's already going madly fast at just over th two-thirds power. Um, so yeah, you can see it's got a little cargo bay under the capsule. Uh, am I sure? Oh well, if you want to learn more about this, just go see my... Actually, my Falcon 9 video isn't great, but because uh, my screen recorder screws it and I flew it terribly. And my commentary was a bit off because I knew I'd flown it terribly. But it for up until the last bit, it was a pretty good video. So, I mean, do check it out. Uh, okay, we're already at 150, and I'm dropping the throttle a bit because I really got to conserve fuel. But it's still going fast. It doesn't need full throttle. That's a, that power, that engine's got something like 19,000 kilonewtons of thrust, which is 400 more than the Rocker Max. So yeah, that'll level small worlds. I should destroy. Get no. Okay, let's not go into stupid things. Anyway, Scott Manley did a thing about deorbiting moons. You can't. They're on rails. But anyway, we are in getting pretty high, but I go a little past 10,000. You have to fly this slightly differently, which is another reason I didn't fly it with mech drip, because you've got to take the throttle down and um, gravity turn late. I didn't do my initial part of the gravity turn at all, because I think I might have done it a tiny bit, but I want to get altitude with the first stage, I want because it won't quite push me out of the atmosphere, because the last... the upper stage is designed for that, but for speed... I really want to push it up with this, but I 
I was really pondering whether to throttle back and save fuel or gun it and do it super fast. But then you get to about there and you lose the first stage. So you have to ditch it and then the more time you spend in that mode with this engine, the more screwed you are. And I've got to push this up to 90,000. I just quickly lose control, which is not looking good for Dragon right now. Although we're only on 146 and we're pretty high up. And it has built in RCS, so I'm just throttling back, uh, pushing it back into position. Throttling up. Leaving RCS on for a little bit of control, I'm trying to control it myself because I want to push it up more than forward because I, I can put, I can circularize later. I've got to kind of get altitude right now, so I'm burning pretty inefficiently just upwards as fast as possible to get to 90,000. I leave it at 85 it's because I'll push it up a bit when I'm out of ammo and possibly save some fuel because this does have a fuel limitation with heavy cargo. Because I did launch um, Dragon, it's um, it's cargo hold, um, everything, and a satellite within the cargo hold, and uh, and I didn't do it very well, and it th and it lost, it burnt out, and uh, and long story short, I lost a satellite in Dragon. Yeah, it's so sad, but it was fine because I just reverted flight. So what you're seeing here is a uh, is something that previously failed just without a satellite. Anyway, no, I, it is a good craft, especially in real life. Um, but I'm not such a fan of it in a uh, Kerbal Space Program. I'm kind of being awful at gaining control here because the gyros are a little bit rubbish in Dragon. On this game, in real life it's good. I just want to stress that. And I'm burning early so that I can push that round and be as fast as possible. Um, and I do, I'm pulling up so I do get it above 90,000 because that's that's fundamental for me, for this winning the challenge, to have pretty much a 90,000 orbit. Luckily for this ship, it is super fast on the first stage, but it's only 175 kilonewtons on this engine, which is undergunned. Um, but it's, it's doing alright. I maybe should have sped this up, but uh, it was originally live commentary, as I say. Um, right. So, uh... Trying to think of trivia for oh yeah Falcon Heavy that uses cross feed between out between the outer boosters and the mid boosters I think it lifts about 54 tons of payload and if it didn't use cross feed and asparagus staging um, and just use all three as one stage it would only be able to lift 43 tons so it does work this whole asparagus staging thing but uh, yeah SpaceX are doing some pretty awesome stuff right now. Um, but I talk about that enough in all my other SpaceX videos. So yeah, that's a little above 92, uh, 91 now, it's almost at 92. Um, my fuel's running a little low and I'm getting pretty worried. I'm thinking, should I warp up and cost time or hold back and waste fuel? It's it's a toss up between fuel and time with this ship. It's It's, it's only real constraint. It's just a little undergunned. Underpowered. It, it doesn't have guns. I should put guns on it. I should so get some... No, okay, I'm focusing on the challenge, not how awesome that would be. Anyway. So, we're just pushing it up a little here. And that... Oh, that's going up to 50, 60, 70. That's 81, 84. Uh, that's... That's... Effectively 90,000, I think we can agree. That's 442. That's pretty, 443 even. That's pretty good. Okay, it didn't quite get to 90,000, but I want to say that's that's there. I mean, because the other side's low is higher. If I'd flown it slightly more efficiently, it would still be under the time. I'm calling Falcon 9 as a win. You can all dis you can, People can dispute that in the comments if you like. Yell at me all you want, but I'm calling that a win for, for Dragon. Not a brilliant win, and slightly disputed, but anyway, let's let's drop everything else. Let's drop the fuel tanks and the solar panel covers you just saw go off the sides. And extend the panels for the kind of winner. But yeah, um, if I'd done that, uh, given it a couple more seconds, it probably... Given it a couple more seconds to drift around without burning, it would have definitely got to 90,000 on Apple Apps. The other side was like 222, so... Wait, what did I just ditch? Oh yeah, there goes that and then it has RCS built in, so, you know, if I'd done that instantly, that could be at like 90,000 right now. So yeah, um, 
these are both pretty awesome ships. I'll, I've included the links in the description. Um, Falcon, the Falcon 9 is made by uh, um, by Kerbex, a mod developer, and the Soyuz I've forgotten. I'll post them in the description. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like the video, please like the video. If you want to see more, especially my uh, my populating the solar system and interplanetary starship series, which will be coming up really soon, subscribe. This has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.